Hi YouTube, Coin Picker here. Here are my thrift store finds for the last couple weeks. Found some really awesome stuff. First of all, picked up some video games. These um, Game Boy, vintage Game Boy cartridges. I think this is like from 1990. This one is probably similar age. Little bit of a break here, but it is still playable. Only bought them because they were 50% off. It was uh, at one thrift store that they had 50% off all collectibles. So it was really busy, uh, tons of stuff. Uh, yeah, so 250 for that, 150 for that, no tax. I will give these to my kids after this video. They like this kind of stuff. And I found this vintage, uh, I guess you could call it Godzilla or a Kaiju toy. And there's a maker's mark on the bottom. It says Imperial, and then it says China, and 1985. Uh, and it has a company name, To. Tomoko Limited. Tomoko Limited. Well, I looked this up. This only cost me a dollar ninety nine at the Salvation Army, and these sell on eBay about twenty to thirty dollars. So it's sort of nostalgic. I remember these things in the uh, novelty shops back when I was a kid. So that's pretty cool. Put that on my shelf. Um, got some cool Japanese, vintage Japanese toys. Mobile Suit Gundam. Mobile Suit in Action. MSN02, Zong, and Zgok. $2.99 for the small one. And $6.99 for the larger one. Yeah, my oldest son really likes Gundam models and toys. Uh, he's been collecting it for many, many years. And when I saw it, uh, I saw these at the another Salvation Army thrift store. Uh, they were right on the shelf, and it looks like it looks like they were opened at one time, but it must have been a collector that had them because they kept everything together. Doesn't look like it's being played with, just, you know, maybe taken out of the package, put on a shelf, or, you know, put back, you know, right out soon after. But have a look, pretty cool. Bandai 19.99 for this one, made in China. So once I saw it, I text my son, do you want it? I'll get it for you. And he said, yes, bring it home right away. This one is from year 2000. Usually if it is um, the uh, model kits, he likes putting together model kits, but um, this is a little bit of a different category. These are sort of like pre-made um, multi-jointed action toys. Uh, with the model kits, he's really picky. So if it was partially put together, he doesn't want it. But this is a little bit different. It's more like a collectible as a part as opposed to a model itself. So he's staked claim onto these two already, so it is earmarked for his collection. Have a look at this. Pretty cool. I think retail, if uh, if it was put onto eBay, this would sell for probably about thirty dollars, and this one probably twenty. This one maybe thirty-five actually, so not bad. All right, next, um, yeah, this is something interesting uh, from the Salvation Army again, just the other day, and um, yeah, I was I was about to leave, and then I just spotted it on the shelf of knickknacks. Uh, you know, where they keep the vases and wood, carved wood stuff. So this 
At first glance, you're thinking, okay, that's a nice little vase. But actually, I've seen it like on TV and movies. Um, it's actually an antique stethoscope. So back in the day, I think like over 100 years ago, initially doctors would just put their ear to the chest of the patient to hear their heart. But later on, um, they started like, I guess it was not um, proper. You know, let's say it was a male doctor and female patient. So they would use like a roll of paper to try to listen, but you know, that didn't work too well. So they devised a simple contraption See, this wide flared part would go on the chest of the person and the doctor's ear would go here. So I think at the store they probably didn't know what it was or they assumed it was just a arts and craft vase. But $1.99 and it has really nice wood grain. I don't know what kind of wood it is. It's not, it's like not too light but not too heavy. Nice patina. Good carving. Well, it's probably turned on a lathe. So, you know, like the industrial revolution period, uh, but pretty cool. And this is for Coin Picker Jr. Cause he likes these cool, uh, you know, medical related uh, anti antiquities, pretty cool. So that is for him. Yeah, it's really odd, like really weird stuff you find uh, when you pay attention at the thrift stores and yeah, I think this would resell on eBay probably about $40 Canadian dollars I'm saying so let's say 40 45 dollars, but it, it's just so cool All right and when they pulled out some new books and they had it in a a box ready to sort of put away at the store. Uh, saw this, spot it right away, and of course, coin picker is a coin collector. So um, it's a Whitman guidebook on ancient Greek and Roman coins. Very good condition. Looks like it just came from someone's bookshelf. And usually, uh, you know, when it comes to um, coin catalogs, you, Coin books, coin catalogs, you rarely see them at the thrift store. If they are there, they're snapped up pretty fast. Um, so if it's there, I'm thinking maybe a collector passed away and the family's just clearing up their shelves. Because usually collectors do not donate or get rid of their coin books or catalogs because it's very good reference material. I mean, of course, I could always go online to get the same information, but it's very handy. You don't always have to like be looking on a device just to do some research. It's really good. Crisp pages. Um, years ago, I, I uh, purchased like a big hoard of ancient um, unidentified Roman and Greek coins. So this book would definitely come in handy to further identify them. Really awesome. That's a key point. Um, Paperbacks at the thrift store were only a 99 cents each. So basically this was a buck. Very good purchase. If I bought it at the coin store or online, all right, this is American price. This is Canadian price. Yeah, it's, it's not cheap. Plus you have to pay tax. So this was a very good find. That will go into my personal coin library coin book library all right next saw this it was about a week week and a bit ago um yeah this was a really good purchase uh dollar 99 it's sterling and let's get a weight on this just so you have a point of reference i mean it it had even though it's beat up like heck um, usually that's a good sign because silver, silver items, usually they're quite thin. So very easy to dent and bruise, but of course it's marked. So this is probably a Christian, Chris, Chrisiting, Chrisiting cup. Oh, that's so hard to say. Chrisiting, you know, like, you know, when you christen the baby when they're born or soon after they're born. All right. So it was marked already. 
when I bought it. Of course it was marked right here. Um, I noticed the mark when I bought it, or right before I bought it. It says sterling. That's the keyword. Well, partially. I think the S is rubbed off. But yeah, that's 925 silver. Very good. And yeah, this cup, it was, I'd say at least an ounce and a half, two ounces. Rolled lip, applied handle, very nice. I mean, of course, it would be nicer if it wasn't banged up, but the main value is the uh, silver content, the weight. All right, let's weigh this baby out. Seventy-eight ounces. Um, look, ounces. I wish. Seventy-eight grams. Um, you deduct a little bit because it is sterling. So pure. Let's say pure would be maybe closer to what? Seventy. Seventy-one. Seventy-two. So we're looking at a little bit over. A little bit over two ounces. Maybe two ounces and a quarter. Um, or maybe a little bit more than that. Let's say two and a half ounces. Two and a half ounces of silver in Canadian. Uh, I think right now silver is about $26. So that's like, um, oh, Point Baker's bad at math. Uh, we're talking about like 75, less than 75. Let's say $65 Canadian, $65, maybe 60. So yeah, not bad for two bucks. I'll take that anytime, 60 bucks. All right, so that was a nice find. Um, yeah, and uh, where I picked up the games, they also had, well, you know, I was, they had like, I don't know, usually I went to the, I rarely go to that place, that small little thrift store. Um, they had, all of a sudden they started pulling out a lot of stuff, I guess for the big sale, but um, they had all their silverware out, they had boxes of baseball cards, hockey cards, you know. Um, I looked at those, you know, they weren't super old. They're like from the 80s and I think more like the 90s in the year 2000s. Uh, didn't even, you know, I just briefly looked at it and disregarded it, not into that. And most of that stuff is not worth anything, so. Um, didn't see anything there except the two games and this. Actually, this flatware set cost $20 regular, only half price, so only 10 bucks. But most of it is plated. But the two or three items that I wanted, three types of items, were these sterling. Oops. Uh, marked sterling sterling from Burke's um, napkin rings so these two are about half an ounce each this souvenir spoon from let's get a close-up on this all right this is learning time folks so Concordia e Fide Fidelitas Latin um, something truth, something in truth. I don't know. Uh, I'll look it up another time. Uh, Inverness, that's uh, the UK. Inverness, is it England? Inverness? Oh, uh, probably not. It's, um, but this, the hallmark, very tricky hallmark. It's down here. All right, learning time, guys. It's really hard to blow up. Let's see, I'll do it like this. So it is M mark, so that's like 1967. But the kicker is there's no lion. So you're, you know, like how I said the British uh, Sterling Hallmark is the lion, uh, walking lion, lion passant, walking to the left, I guess. Um, but the first mark is, all right, this is the maker's mark, this first one, RA, I believe. Second cartouche, little round mark. Inside, it has a thistle. 
So that's a flower from Scotland. So prior to 1975, Scotland to signify sterling would have a thistle, their national flower. But after 75, they adopted, you know, the standardized lion, you know, for the rest of England to signify silver, sterling silver. And here we have the castle somewhere in Scotland. I forgot. Um, and well, you guys could look it up online. And then the date mark 1967. So it makes sense. Like, I didn't really know the exact dates until I Googled it. So yeah, after 1975, out went the thistle and in came the lion. Pretty cool. So maybe some people saw it and thought, oh, another silver plated spoon. Because they were looking for the lion or 925 or sterling. But no, if you know your stuff, you will get the goods. So this pretty cool spoon into my collection, or I would say hoard of spoons. And yeah, I had to buy the whole box to get these. I, I asked if I could buy them separately, which was probably not really the smartest thing. Um, and they said, oh, well, the manager will have to come and give you a price if you want it separate, you want to leave your name and number. I'm thinking, man, what am I doing? This will be gone if I left. I would never get a call back. So, oh yeah, and the best part is this. So this is also Burks, our local silver, silver company, silversmith. These little demi tasse spoons. And it, they are marked and it's really nice having a set. It's actually very usable. Right, you can see that. Sterling, Burke Sterling. All right. So that was really nice. I think I got about four ounces of silver after you calculate 92 and a half percent purity. So I had to buy that whole set Luckily, it was only $20 regular price, which made this only 10 bucks. So I don't know why I even bothered to ask them to buy, you know, sell it to me separately. It probably ended up, it would cost me like more to buy it separately than in that box. But no, actually I was humming and hawing. At first I said, nah, you know, and they put it off the back. Uh, and I thought, what am I doing? I, I started calculating the math and, um, estimating the weight of the silver and I'm thinking this is about a hundred bucks Canadian the silver in there and I don't want it for 10 bucks so I went back right away it was stupid me because there, you know everywhere these days there's lineups so once I left there was like a lineup of three people and I had to walk you know line up again because of the limit how many people in the store so I went back to the section and I saw the lady putting it back into the box and I said, okay, I changed my mind. I'm going to get the box. So yeah, how often do I get to buy silver at like one tenth its value? So ugh, sometimes you got to think coin picker, do the math before you walk away. Because you know that even at half price, that would have been like half price of the silver, 50 bucks. I'd still be in the, uh, what do you call it? In the blue, basically in profit. So don't make the same mistake. If it makes sense, do the numbers, calculate. If it makes sense, buy it, right? Uh, next, next, we're talking more silver. All right, you know how I say, don't always, um, you know, like uh, write off those places that you think you'll never find any good stuff. Um, one of the worst places I traditionally think of as the worst place to find goodies, Value Village. Value Village thrift store, they always, they have someone always online checking values and, and pricing them accordingly, right? But you know what? No one's perfect. Um, they don't have time to analyze everything to the 10th de uh, degree, right? So, um, 
Yeah. So uh, I was going through this one in Vancouver in a rough part of town. And, um, you know, it's funny here because your mind always um, interprets things differently. You know, it, it, there's a bias, right? So I go in the store, all right? And I, I make it a beeline to the, uh, um, the cutlery area because I did find some spoons and, you know, sterling before. Um, and I, I see, oh, some lady is hovering over it, some older lady, and she's like looking through the bags. I'm thinking, okay, another thrifter, another hunter looking for sterling. Good luck. Good luck for me, you know, after her, you know, going through it. So I start hovering around and started going through the aisles of knickknacks. And then these two guys walking past me are, are saying something like, oh yeah, that was like um, 200 grams and blah, blah, blah. And you know, and yeah, the guy was like talking grams and I forgot some other stuff, value and whatever. Right away I was thinking, no, no, he was saying, oh, I found it. And it was like 200 and something grams um it'd be worth this much and blah 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 right away i interpret oh some more thrifters they must have picked up some sterling item off the shelf but i sort of peeked in their cart and i didn't or basket and it's like i don't see anything so again i thought okay the place has been ransacked you know all the goodies are gone but they probably were talking about a recipe uh Talk about, you know, how much for whatever ingredient. Or, you know what, we're in British Columbia. Like, uh, marijuana is legal. So they could be talking about marijuana. Like, I don't know. Uh, who knows? So um, I still do my thing. I was at the store anyways. I go through everything. And lo and behold, I see this plate. three ninety nine All you know, it's like in the uh, silver plated trays and Nick, you know, stuff aisle, you know, it's jam packed. And I look at the back and wow, it looks like silver. It has that dented dimply look and you know, that, that shine of silver. It looked pretty good. And even the toning, the black toning in the front looked very good. I looked all over. I could not see any hallmarks. Looked, 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 looked. Every little dent, to, you know, like sometimes it's sort of like hidden, it looks like a dent and it's a hallmark, but nothing. I thought, eh, it's probably silver plate. I'm just waiting to find that EP, what was that? EP, uh, electroplated, nickel silver, EP and S mark, like I always see, but I look and I look and lo and behold, lo and behold, it's hidden in the tarnish and on the rim. All right, what do we see here? We see the anchor cartouche, anchor mark in the cartouche. We see the lion. Mind you, these look how big my finger is, all right? These are tiny marks. And we see a funny looking M in a cartouche. So I looked up the date and that's 19, all right, this is um, 1911 Birmingham. Yeah, the anchor is mean, means the city of Birmingham, 925 silver, 1911. Look, I'll just focus out. Look at that, look how tiny those marks are. And this is a very pretty little tray. I mean, it's not a huge tray, but still it's like, you know, maybe you put some bonbons, little chocolates on it. Oops. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very, and it's, it's, it's quite hefty. Very nice tray. All right. So let's get a weight on the, on this. Very nice piece. hold because it's so big it's going to be off this well a little bit off the scale until it beeps that means it holds the weight 
373 grams of sterling. I already calculated it out. It worked out to be 11 ounces. 11 ounces of, uh, I think a little bit more than 11 ounces of sterling. But it worked out to be like slightly under $300 in Canadian dollars of uh, sterling silver. Yeah, under $300 for $4. Can you believe that? It's like crazy. Really awesome find. Haven't had such a good find in a while for sterling. Uh, yeah, and so never write off the places that you think you never find anything because you will be, you will be pleasantly surprised once in a while, just like me. So I never stop looking. I always go and look at the same areas and look for the same marks. And you'll be so good at it that you'll just like spot it a mile away. Like, boom, there it is. Boom, there, you know, awesome. Uh, the place that had the 50% off collectibles, they also had this in the case. And it, it is, blah, it is, an art pottery vase for ten dollars and it was well it is in very good condition you got some enameling no damage whatsoever these are things like glass or pottery you do not want to buy the stuff with damage because that really kills the value all right so it's marked Carlton Ware uh, registration number made in England some uh, makers marks very good quality. A little crazy on the inside, but it can be expected. Um, this vase, I looked it up. It is like from the 1920s, I believe, 1923 or four. Um, it reminded me of, they called Lusterware. I forgot which pottery company used to make them, but um, it's of that, um, that era, that time frame. So I guess, you know, other companies try to copy, right? Or mimic it. Um, so I did look it up before I bought it. It sells a little bit over $100 Canadian, which is not bad. And um, it's close to 100 years old. So once it hits 100, that's the key dates, right? They say something like collectibles, it's 50 years. Antiques, it's 100 years. So if it is like 95 years, they say, 95 years old, don't sell it until it reaches 100, then you'll get more money because, you know, 100 is like the key number. So uh, for five bucks, and this is a uh, gilt, gold gilt, on the edge and on the foot and some of the areas around there. So for five bucks, I thought that is a steal. And it's very lovely, very beautiful. So had to get that. Definitely a keeper. I'm gonna put that on my mantle. All right, so nice English pottery. Um, and last few items. Very seldom seen, but uh, check this out. Oops, just move some things around. All right, we got this. Looks like a rice bowl, right? But check this out. You could tell by the quality, All right? That's a phoenix, some clouds, the celestial pearl, dragon. It's a little bit of a crack line or hairline crack. Gold rim. All right, this is Chinese export uh, porcelain and you can tell by the age right. all right when it comes to this old stuff uh, i'm not too picky about these light little hairline cracks see the little iron spots come uh, starting to or what do you call it iron corrosion is it corrosion or spots starting to come out of the glaze out of the um, material itself Right. It's just a lot of in, 
imperfections. All right, and then you look at the foot. All right, 299. All right, look at the foot. The, oops, oh, don't break it now, fun picker. Right, put on the book, it's safer. All right, you look at the foot. It has that typical aged look. And it's glazed in the middle, but there's no mark. They call it uh, Chinese export porcelain. And you could tell that it is probably n late 19th century um, because after like 1890, uh, Imports to the U.S. and Europe, other countries, generally uh, you'd had, you know, back then they had to put um, the um, country of origin marked on the bottom, either in the glaze or just stamped. I guess still the same thing, like enameled on. Um, so they would have said like China, and sometimes it would be like spelled like the N was like reversed, you know, by accident. So there's no mark whatsoever here. And then I think in the 1920s-ish, don't quote me on it, it would say like made in and in whatever country. Um, and then like if it was further on, you know, it'll say like made in China, Jing De Jian, or even like in Chinese marks. But having no mark at all, then we're talking about pre-1890 for three bucks and I found a pair of them. Let's have a look at the other one. I think this is the better of the two. Yeah, no hairline crack. So it, I can imagine like this is probably a family heirloom, probably most likely not a Chinese family, but let's say um, a well-to-do family in, you know, old money family in Canada. Um, having a pair, it might've been like a wedding gift of one of their great grandparents or grandparents, more like great grandparents. That's, see, I like to imagine the story behind objects like the quality is not bad. I mean, compared to the stuff that was pumped out in the 70s and 80s in China, um, there's actually some skill, the little uh, subtleties, because they still remade this style for many, many decades, if not century afterwards. And it just got cruder and cruder. Like, um, there was no more artistry or whoever was doing it was just pumping it out and they're just using um, uh, manual labor just to, you know, fill in the colors and whatnot. But um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of detail. Very cool. So um, checked online and um, there's actually that not that many references to this, which is a good sign. If you see like tons of the same stuff being sold online, it, you know, it could be modern reproductions. Um, saw something similar, which, which, which was much more cruder looking, which I would think it was like newer, the, you know, the ones I saw. So seeing a very similar design, but more detailed, more quality to it, I think those other ones were based on this older original. So that was a very nice find from the Salvation Army as well. So always check their, um, you know, dish, dish aisle, you know, because you could find some really cool antiques there. And got this the other day. This one, I had to call a lifeline, you know, like just like that, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Um, game show a long time ago. So basically, I went to a Salvation Army uh, a good half an hour drive away from me and I saw this on the shelf and I thought, hmm, hand-painted Chinese vase. Well, say some people call vase, some people call jar, you know, like a ginger jar, 
because of the, the style, the shape. Um, but have a nice look. So it looks like a mother and child. See how they used to do the hairstyles back? I'm assuming this is probably like mm, late 1700s, early 1800s in China. Some little kid playing with this little dangly flower thing. So it's painted. No damage, which is good. Enameling. No iron marks. Um, all right, the stamp mark is actually, it's not an imperial mark, but it's actually a, um, I guess a, a pottery company mark. So I think this is Kang Si, like, no, is it Gang Si, like the province? Uh, and then this is Jing Chuan, uh, view, spring, and then this, I think it means like um, pottery or porcelain. So um, $3.99, wasn't sure about it. So I had to like ask my, took a picture, you know, we chatted to my mother-in-law and asked her, please ask father-in-law to check out the mark and tell me should I buy it or not. And funny thing, um, so uh, they got back to me and they said, you know what, coin picker, it's only four bucks. Even if it's no good, just buy it anyways. I mean, it's only four bucks. I go, yeah, but if it's if you could tell me if it's junk, I wouldn't even spend the four bucks. I would, I don't know, buy a soda or something, uh, whatever, right? But uh, yeah, if you tell, and um, I basically I had to be more specific. They're very PC about answering when it comes to collectibles. Uh, I had to ask them, um, is it worth buying? Uh, it's worth more than four, but would you say it's worth 50 bucks? And they said, they think that it, you'd have at least like tenfold of your, you know, of profit from something like this. So I thought, okay, that's good enough for me. But they said, oh, how valuable can you, do you think it is? It's only four bucks. I go, hey, you know, I always keep my mind open when it comes to these fines. But uh, yeah, um, they think that it's either late Qing or early, uh, or early Republic, China Republic period. So this is before the communists took over in 1949. It was the, you know, like previous government was called the uh, Republic, you know, the Republic government, uh, which they fled to Taiwan after the Civil War. The government, that is. So check out that mark. It was stamped on and I guess fired again. So if anyone out there knows what is the history of this factory, like, you know, when they were in production, uh, what sort of value you would place on this jar, please do let me know. It would be much appreciated. But they, you know, my in-laws were saying, like, do you like it? Do you like the painting? And I go, eh, that's okay. Oh, four bucks. It's a little bit dirty on the inside, but uh, yeah, it is the start of a uh, porcelain collection. So I thought not bad. I think it might have originally come with like a cover, but you know, if it's close to a hundred years old, if not a hundred years old or more, um, these sort of things that get separated, you know, it's not surprising. So I feel lucky just to be able to get the, at least the body of the, um, the item. But it would be nice to get a cover. But maybe one of these days I'll find a matching or similar cover that's orphaned and I'll just put it on there. Anyways, these are my lovely finds. 
Uh, hope you guys and gals enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Coin Picker out.